vuelta y vive. Gotta live, gotta breathe, gotta eat, gotta dar la vuelta y vive. All right, pues estamos aquí en otro programa. We're here in another show of Da La Vuelta y Vive, and it's such a pleasure to uh, be here in front of you because today we have a very, very special guest, um, gentleman that uh, we met uh, a month, month and a half ago. And uh, actually, we met him on the ring. I didn't fight him, but somebody else did, and it was just an awesome sight to see. We have uh, with us today El Inicio. And uh, uh, El Inicio... Este goes by the name of his real name is Jose Joe Jose, Jose Luis Jose Luis Sauceda Jose Luis Sauceda. So we have him here today. Thank you so much for being here, Jose. Thank you. It's a pleasure, man. All right, man. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your name, El Inicio. Where does that come from? What What makes you feel you're El Inicio? Uh, I've said it before. I'm just the beginning of uh, of everything man uh, my family tree um I, just the start of everything the the journey of boxing uh, i want i'm the next the next world champion i'm 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 the beginning of everything man all right let, let, let's let's you you said something very very interesting right now that that caught my caught my eye my hearing here uh you said that you're the beginning of your family tree that's not something that we hear very commonly i mean i know like uh, when you talk about your coach's family, Los Castillos, the, you know, from Westlaco, you're talking about a huge family, you know, uh, he can trace, he can trace his family tree, maybe, maybe, I don't know, three, maybe three generations. Uh, uh, why do you say you're the beginning of the family tree? Uh, I say that because I don't, I don't even know, like, where I come from. I don't even know, like, who my real parents are. I don't know uh, where I was like what my ancestries like i don't i don't know my family tree i don't know if, who my aunt my my uncle if i have sisters if i if i have cousins if i have grandpas grandpas i don't ha i don't have a family tree so uh i'm trying to build my own now mm -hmm. and uh the reason why i mentioned this is because i was adopted at the age of three and uh my adopted parents they raised me in until the age about 15, 16, and then my adopted mom passed away. My adopted dad kicked me out. Um, we didn't get along so well after my mom. Well, my we're we're going to get passed. into that, but I, I still want to. Uh, I'm sorry I'm stopping you, but I because you know we we got about 30 minutes right. So um, so so let, let let's go back to that. So at three years old, at three years old, your your uh, if the your parents now the parents that you know. The parents that you know that you, they're your parents, uh, they adopted you. Yeah. Uh, so, do you remember anything at three years old? Do you um, remember anything? Do you remember a mom and a dad? Do you remember uh, anything before you were adopted? No, no? I don't. No. I don't remember nothing. Do you know, uh, like, who they are? Uh, no, not even. So, no, did no. they go through an adopting uh, the adopting agency, or they freaking? Got you in back of a bar or what? How did they get you? How, how well, did they adopt? My adopted parents they got me through an adopted agency. They they weren't able to have kids, so they they went looking for kids to adopt, and I just so happened to be one of the ones they picked, including my my half brother. Uh -huh. uh, we have we have the same biological mother, but different dads. Okay. Um. Uh, okay, I got lost there. So they they adopted you and your stepbrother. Yes, I got you. Yes. I got you. Okay, and that's from uh, your biological mom. Yes, do you which even I know? Which I don't do, know of. Do you know, do you even know her name? No, you don't know her name. I don't know nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing, nothing. And, and it doesn't like it doesn't hit you in your head that you want to know where. Yeah, you're it from. does. It it kind of uh, from time to time it eats me up, but I just throw it in the back and just. But what, what does it do to you? Will it eat you up in what way? It, well, it really doesn't, like, eat me up in a negative way. It gives me, um, it's something that I think about it when, I, when I'm going to bed type of situation. Like, like, damn, like, it just pops up and I'm just like, oh, well, I wonder. I wonder this. I wonder that. And I just keep wondering. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. That's, that's deep, man. Yeah. That's deep. Uh, so, 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 okay, so what was it like? 
Do you know if you have any other siblings? Do you uh, besides my ha uh, my half brother? No, uh, I don't. I don't know any bi biological. So you don't even know if their life continued after you after you left, or um. So I was born with cocaine in my system, so uh -huh. they took me away from my biological parents, right? Uh -huh. Um. So they gave them some a uh, couple chances um, to to get cleaned, you know, to change or whatever, and they never did. So that's when they they took me away from them, and they I got put up for adoption, and uh, I guess uh, either they can continue that path or they maybe they changed. Who knows? I don't know. I was would like to know. Was that cocaine or was that um, was that crack or what? I don't know. My my adopted mom just would tell me that I was born with with control substances in my system, you know. Uh -huh. Did you notice anything um a anything throughout your growing life like when you were in school, did you notice a any issues, medical issues, mental issues? Uh no, I just I mean, I as a kid uh <laughs> as a kid I did uh I was diagnosed with uh schizophrenia. I was a very crazy kid growing up. I went, I was going through a lot, heard voices, uh, stuff like that. I was put what in. Was you, what, what was your diagnosis again? Schi uh, schizophrenia. Is uh, it schizophrenia? Something like that. Uh, okay. At a very early age, I was diagnosed with that. And then ADHD and uh, ADD and all that other stuff. And uh, I was always in and out of uh, those behavior play, uh, hospitals or whatever. Uh-huh. So yeah, that and, was. And, and how about your your um, so. So obviously, yeah, I mean that those are those are things. That scientifically, I think I've read that that you know kids that are born from, you know, cocaine substances or a control substance uh, abuse, uh, the the kids come out. They have these type of issues. Uh, how were your grades? How did you do in school? My grades were straight A's, A B on a, 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 a B on a row all the time. My my adopted mom had me, uh, you know, she taught me good. She kept me on a straight line. Uh, yeah. So what type of voices did you hear? Oh, it was uh, it was like like my parents were weak. Uh, to kill them, this and that, and my brother, my brother's weak. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, and I don't know. Do you still hear those voices? No, man. They don't say Joe Castillo <laughs> or anything like that. No, <laughs> uh, I snapped out of that. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember what age, but uh, <laughs> uh, it became to a point where it was just a mental thing. You know, my mom would, uh, I would take pills to concentrate during in school, right? Uh -huh. And she would uh, swap them with like Advil or like, an, you know, and. I would go like a week or two, supposedly going on my medication, and then she'll tell me, "Look, look, Mijo, like, it's 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 in your mind because for these two weeks you've been taking a leave or Advil, you know, you're not taking the medications that the doctor's prescribing you. The the doctor would yeah, have I mean, me. Your mom was a philanthropist, bro. I mean, uh, to 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 do that to take a chance. I mean, shit, you you know, you were." dreaming or thinking that you wanted to kill them and then here she is playing a placebo effect on you giving you uh, uh, other medication that make you think that you were taking so basically she was saying yeah stop your shit dude it's it's in your mind yeah it's it's, it's, it's all a mental thing and that's why now nowadays i i tell everybody and i preach it like anything you want to do anything you you want to pursue like it's a it's a mental thing if you want to stop smoking weed it's a mental thing you can stop doing it you want to stop drinking you can stop doing it because my mom proved to me that, you know, that. Okay, so we come we come back and we go further up. Uh, and obviously you've been trained in boxing but at a very young age by your stepdad. Yes, adopted, uh, adopted dad. Or, I mean, I, I'm sorry. A, I like to say adopted dad. Adopted dad. Or your dad. Cause yeah, that's in the a way, yeah, you know, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's the only dad you know. Yeah, true. So, so... Your dad uh, brings you up in, in, in the ring, and you start boxing at a very young age. I think I, I heard you uh, mention, I think it was over 150 fights in, in the amateur. Amateur, yes. Uh, and so you're coming in, 
now you just had your first um, uh, your first pro fight, and it was a knockout. Uh, it was a knockout to see, and it was a knockout that you know I think a lot of people are gonna remember it when. Uh, huh? It was a knockout of the night. Yeah, the knockout of the night, and I think uh, at least for me, the knockout of this year that I that I've seen. I mean, I'm telling you, and I and I I'm very versatile in, in boxing. I know it well, but uh, I have not seen anybody go to the body the way you do. And uh, and that's a scary thought. That's a scary thought because you're going to scare a lot of people out there. Um, let me just tell you that, okay, so your dad brings you up and, and uh, what happens at age 15? I mean, your mom, your mom dies and then what happens? I mean, all of a sudden he just says, I don't want you here no more. I mean, what? Uh, no, um, he... When my mom was basically, you know, because she was in, she was uh, dying at home, right? She, she had a hospital bed uh, at, at her house and she was dying at home. She had a friend that lived like two houses down that would come while my dad was working and take care of her and everything. Once she got worse, my dad decided to uh, to stay in town, get a little job, you know, and just be there for her, right? Supposedly. And late nights whenever... Uh, that lady was done helping my mom, like my dad and her would like chit chat to like three, four in the morning watching TV, who knows what else. Right. And, uh, it was just like that, like that, like that. And then my, my mom passes away. And then within a month, she's already like moved in into the house. So like, I found that very, uh, I took that very deep and, uh, and I, I would bring it up to him and he it it was, offended you. Yeah. It was his rules. Or I leave, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to do what I say. You're going to, you know, accept what I do or, you know, you could get the fuck out of my house, mm -hmm. basically. And at what, at what age was that? This was like turning 16. Turning I 16. had just, I had gotten my first job at Whataburger and, uh, yeah. So you go, uh, pretty much become a tumbleweed and you just go from place to place. Yeah. Uh, staying with friends from school, um, girlfriends, um, and. You know, just friends from work, uh, uh, friends from boxing, um, just stuff like that, man. And just so we, now, so now, um, now you come and uh, t talk to me a little bit about uh, your comeback. Uh, now somebody uh, discovers you, and uh, you're here, pretty much a tumbleweed. Uh, somebody is actually taking a chance on you, uh, and and I hate to say it this way, but it's it's a dangerous game when you're going from place to place and not have or have you found that stability in your mind to say you know what this is where I'm gonna be, this is where I belong. Uh, it, have you ever thought of that or have you thought of that? Because it's it sounds to me like um, it sounds to me like you were pretty much like on barred time there at, at, at your mom's house and then all of a sudden she passes away you're not there anymore you're you're all over the place when is when is Joe gonna establish in his mind that this is me this is where I'm at like where do I plan to settle like time wise or well right now what are you feeling right now what what is right now I'm enjoying the journey um, mm -hmm. I'm blessed to have someone that that uh that is taking their time and uh, uh, finances to uh, get me to where I need to be in the boxing world. And uh, uh, along with that journey, we're, there's going to be a lot of more traveling, but it, it, I don't see it as being place to place anymore. It's more of a, of a journey, you know, a better, a better path. You know, I'm still going to be bouncing around, but I'm doing something that I want to do now, and it's well, I'm and, enjoying and, and that. Let's, let's get let's get one thing straight, uh, uh, Joe. When we're talking about jumping around, is is not the. I'm not trying to say the actual place. I'm trying. I'm trying to say your actual mind is when when have you found that piece in your mind that says this is what I want to do. This is where I'm at. I'm I'm. I'm gonna follow what I need to follow to get me to where I gotta go. I, I I guess what I'm trying to get at here is I'm trying to find out if in if in your mind or in in front of all of us here we're actually sitting in front of 
the next world champion. I'm trying to find that out because I, I want to know, I want to feel, I want to feel that behind the De La Hoyas, the Cesar Chavez, the, the Pacquiao's, the uh, Mayweather's, uh, that at one point in their career, they said to themselves, I'm going to be there one day. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about none of that crap. I'm talking about the reality of reaching a goal. Not a lot of people do it. Where are you at right now at this point in time? Um, that's the mindset, man. That's the goal. Uh, that's all I think about. And I know I belong in this in this journey, in this path. And I belong. Uh, eventually, I will get to uh, live those moments like all those other professional fighters did. Um, this is my job. This is my hobby. And uh, I'm not doing it because... Yeah, I'm getting paid, but I, I'm doing it because I love it. I've I've done it so long, and I I realized at a point in my life when I was fucking up that this is what I was meant to do. Like, get your shit together. You're good at it. Stick with it, and just go with it. And I, I'm going with it, and uh, I'm loving every part of it. What's the normal day of El Inicio uh, from the time that you wake up? I mean, because obviously, uh, those are big words. Those are big words right there, what you just said right now. This is what I'm going to do. You already you know. I compared, yeah, I, I was the one that brought up the champions' names, right? But, I mean, let's face it. They started somewhere, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm just trying to figure out if if they had that mentality, if they had in their mind at one point or another, they said to themselves, you know what? Enough of bullshit. This is what I'm going to do. Not everybody gets there. A lot of people say, you know what? There's only one that makes it up there. That's why there's only one champ. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so you're talking about placing yourself in in a sport that there's millions of people out there doing. There's millions of people that and and to sit here and and hear hear a story like yours, it 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 moves me. But there's stories out there. There's yeah. there's stories out there, and we can't sit and and just depend on on how we grew up and what we went through to get to where we're at. You at one point you gotta say to yourself, "Hey, you know what? This is what I'm gonna fucking do. This is what's gonna take me to the next level." And you know, I find I find it I find it intriguing to have somebody like you that's already I saw I've seen you. That's what I'm saying. Is like I see I see what I see. When I see you up there, I see a lot of potential. But I saw and I've seen a lot of potential in a lot of people. Um, guess there's a lot more discipline to it, right? Yeah. Uh, so, one of the weakest things that we have is, as men, you know, especially in this profession, is women. Okay? And that's been the downfall on a lot of people that I know. Yeah. Um, um, and the other one, of course, is, is, is the party life. And can, I, can I speak on something? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've learned that lesson. I've, I've, I've learned that lesson uh, being place to place and everything. I've spent a lot of time with staying with girls because I needed that household. I need it. And uh, I've been in relationships after relationships. And uh, I realized that I I let a lot of women, a lot of girls in, in my life uh, distract me from also this. You know, where this is where I belong. And I could have been maybe a little bit more... F I, w I would have had this opportunity maybe sooner if I would have not let these women, you know, distract me from what what I need but to do. But it's not all their fault. It's not, <laughs> but they played a part, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it's uh, and, and I'm saying it because, you know, there's been plenty of champions, they make it to be champions, and then, 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 then that's where they screw up, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's very little people, there's like very few that say, you know what, I'm smart, I'm going to be smart, I'm going to do something with what I do. And that's in anything that you do. I mean, there's you see records around my studio here, and you see all these different artists and stuff, but only a few of them actually can say, you know what, they were the GOAT, they were the top of the line. They yeah. made it because they... It's not, And we're not talking about sacrificing your love life, sacrificing anything. It's being smart about how you're going to apply yourself to to uh, to uh, to what you're trying to do so so when when and I'm sorry I'm being hard on that because I know that kind of hit a nerve there but 
I just want to be true to the people that follow us, that listen to us. And when they see you, they see a kid that's, that has his shit together. And it's kind of, it, there's been, it, it's been disappointing a lot when you know people, you know, you know kids, they, they have everything right there in front of them. And then the next thing you know is uh, they go and they fuck up. They freaking do something stupid and that's it. I, and I'm not talking about just women. I'm talking about stupid stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've had... They're getting drunk and, yeah. and going and, and getting a DWI. And I mean, kids that have, that have had that opportunity to say, you know what? I'm the best. It, it, you know, and it's not, it's not just getting a belt. It's actually being a champion and being a champion with a lot of responsibility. What are you willing to do? Because this is a huge sacrifice. And I see a champion in front of me. But what is El Inicio willing to do to maintain and be that champion that he feels he's going to be and I feel he's going to be? Anything and everything. Uh, I wake up 5 o'clock in the morning. By 6 o'clock, I'm doing strength and conditioning. Uh that's an hour hour of, of my time, and then I get my my breakfast in, and then I, I go I go on my run, my miles, and then um, I'm either resting or, or taking care of my body, or you know, and then boom, five o'clock is the gym, and after the gym, I'm running again, and back to it. That's that's an everyday process, and I'm willing to do anything and everything that it takes to get to that level. Um, all the sacrifices, the eating healthy being hungry at night, you know, because you got to eat a small portion and you're like, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hungry. You got to suck it up and wait till the morning and, and go grind and, and eat what you, what you're supposed to eat. Right. And, uh, it, it's hard, but you know, it, it's, it's like you say, it's, it's about making the sacrifices to get to the next level. That, that discipline, that is, uh, that is hard. Uh, so, so when, uh, you know, and that's what I wanted to kind of hear is, is when you're, you know, you're disciplined and waking up in the morning and doing what you got to do for the day. That's your job. That's what you're dedicated to do. Uh, and, and uh, you know, of course, your personal life is, is your personal life. But at the end of the day, everything, when you get on that ring, everything's about what you're going to be doing up there. Yeah. The business you're going to take care of. And uh, so what... What, uh, let me ask you this question. This uh, shit, man, that's, that's, it's exciting because it's, it, it's, a, it's like a reality that we have here in front of us that it could happen. And it's like, damn, it will man. happen. Yeah, it will happen. There you go. So coaches, coaches, uh, he just gave me your schedule. He's working the hell out of you. I mean, you're going to be on the ring, uh, this year, at least three more times. And we're already past half the year. Um, who do you want that championship match to be against? What do you mean? Like, I mean the big one, the big dog. Who do you, who, like right now, well, I mean, let's face it. You know the boxers, they're yeah, out yeah, there. Yes. Who do you want right now? I feel like I will eventually come across uh, Xander Zayas. He's, he's, he's the same age as me. Um, he's doing his thing, though. He's already up there in the, in the, chap, in the champions level. I feel like once I get 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 myself up there, he he'll be one of the guys to uh, to beat. You know, mm -hmm. um, like I said, he's 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 my age, so um, I started a little bit late, so I got a lot of catching up to do. But uh, I'll be meeting fighters like him eventually. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So uh, coach is gonna take care of that. Getting getting on there now. We know, uh, and now let's get to the. Uh, the ugly side, the ugly side of boxing. Unfortunately, it's it's a part of it, and uh, of course, it takes money to make money and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, when you're dealing with somebody's heart, because that's what I see in 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 you as a boxer is your heart. Uh, but let's face it, there's business, and um, the ugly side of boxing is that if you know, there's gonna be people that are gonna be after your ass. And uh, what are you doing to, to protect yourself at this point? Because young man like you, um, it's very easy to 
convince you to do something to say, you know what, hey man, you know what, come over here, I can do this for you, I can do that for you, whatever. What are you prepared mentally to be able to handle? Because it's important to talk talk about that. Um, it's gonna happen or it is already happening. I don't know, but like, are we talking about like people that are wanting to like take me away from like what I have already or what I'm? Yeah, people that are wanting to say, you know what, I want to throw this guy against Sayas right now. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, because if somebody, let's face it, somebody comes and tells you, you know what, I got fifty grand on fifty grand for you, is that I'll put you in the ring tomorrow with Zayas. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I mean, because that's where that's where this sport gets ugly. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. No, um, I mean, it can get as it's gonna get ugly, but um, I have, I believe, I have a team that. Uh, uh, that knows what's right for me and when when is the time is right and they're preparing me for for uh, opportunities like that and uh, and if they think I'm ready then I believe in them and then I I obviously believe in myself. Let me just tell you, just if it seems so, if if it seems too simple, I don't think it's right. I mean that's my advice to you. If you, you yeah, know, if I like to take risk. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, but I'm also. Uh, trying to just make making sure i'm prepared for, for to take those risks i'm so happy that um that you got your shit straight i yeah. uh, i'm happy because so i'm happy for myself man <laughs> uh, it, it, i think about it every day i look back at memories on my snapchat and uh instagram and facebook old facebook accounts and i'm just like i'm proud of myself you know i've came a long way a lot of people still think uh I'm that old kid from 16, 17 years old, and I'm not. But I let them think, and I use all that negativity to to continue doing what I'm doing now. What do you see in your opponent when you're fight when you're fighting? I see all my all the all my trials and tribulations that I've gone through. Holy shit! That's and scary. I scary. <laughs> yeah yeah it is. Um, but that that's what fuels me. Uh, I like getting into the ring. With the mindset, I like being in the gym as well with the mindset of I'm by myself. I've always been by myself. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm in the ring by myself. So I like to keep that mentality of that, that loner life. You know, Every, uh, it's me against the world. Amen. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. And, you know, we're here in the mind of a, uh, a young man uh, from... A boxing perspective, but at the end of the day, it's life for him to get into a ring and not know what's going on. I mean, look at us. Look at us every day when we wake up. We don't know if it's going to be our, our last day. So what I'm, what I'm proposing to you, who has followed us up until now and has learned anything with this show with uh, El Inicio, uh, is that uh, we got to take every day as if it's our last. When we wake up, when we eat what we drink, what we do, what we think, everything. Everything t takes us to where we need to go to. And sometimes we don't even know where we're going, but even not knowing, living like, living like that is, is giving the most out of who you are. So let's do that. Let's, uh, you know, like, uh, like our show says, da la vuelta y vive. Turn around and live. Get the past. Let's worry about what's in front of us and, yep. and live a better life. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank All you. Right.